Well, this is a first for us. We've never done a cruise before. We're down in Southampton and we're going to be uh, setting sail on Iona, which is P&O's largest cruise ship. So, you know, for our first cruise, we're, we're going big with this. We've got the feeling it's go big or go home, which we're not going home. We're going big. So we're going to be sailing to the fjords in Norway. Um, and yeah, we're down in Southampton. We came down last night from Scotland. We got the train. We stayed the night in an Airbnb. And in this video, our plan is to kind of do a vloggy style video, but also to share hints and tips that we learn along the way. I, as you know, if you've watched our previous vlogs, am a very big researcher. So I have researched a lot about this ship. I feel like I know a lot already, which I'm going to share with you but also I'm sure we'll learn stuff along the way as well, which we're gonna also share with you. So we have dropped off our bags. Our check-in boarding time isn't until three o'clock, which is a little bit late in the day. So we've dropped off our bags, which was really easy to do. And we're now gonna have a walk around Southampton. It's really windy. So we're hoping that it's not gonna be too choppy today. We had a bit of time to kill before boarding, so we decided to come to the Sea City Museum in Southampton. Uh, the main draw for me was that it's got an exhibition about the Titanic. And because we're about to go on a cruise ship, maybe it seems a bit morbid, but I've just been quite fascinated by it all. Obviously, I watched the film many years ago when it first came out. Um, but yeah, I just fancied coming up and I, I highly recommend it. It's a really good museum. It's £10 each entry, but tip for you if you're coming here before going on the Iona, definitely drop your suitcases off at the ship first because it's quite a big walk um, up to the museum from the ship. It takes about 25 minutes. Um, and also you have to pay to leave your luggage if you want to leave it and walk around the museum. It's three pounds a bag, which is quite a lot if you've got a few bags. Um, so definitely drop your luggage off first. And then if you're interested in kind of maritime things or the Titanic, then definitely come here and kill an hour or two. I highly recommend it. So we're getting close to boarding time. We're gonna go and pick up Ewan's dad um, and head to the ship. I'm really excited. It's a big, big boat, this. I see the size of it there. But we're looking forward to going on it anyway. And that's the rain just coming on. So we'll get sheltered. Something to eat. And we lie down and we'll be fine. So it's obviously a very full ship today because the queue to get into arrivals is very long but it seems to be moving quite quickly so that's good. So a few weeks before your cruise you'll get given an embarkation time and they say not to bother coming any earlier because you won't probably get on. Um, and yeah, it is busy. Getting closer! So we're in the terminal now. It's very busy in here as well and there's more queues but it's moving pretty quick. We were only waiting outside for about 20 minutes and hopefully this won't take too long either and we'll be on the ship soon. So I've just been making some bookings. I'm going to tell you about that shortly. Um, very good information to help you. So we've been split up from Ewan's dad because he's on a different deck um, and we've just realised we don't know his room number so that's a really good start to the proceedings. Not sure how we're going to contact him but we'll work it out one way or another. So you'll be allocated a muster station and when you first get on the boat you'll go to that muster station and that's just where you need to go in case of an emergency. And now we're going to find our room so we're in 5349 and the suitcases are here I think so that's good. Um, we're nearly there at the room. So we finally found our cabin. It took us a little while. It was a little bit confusing because the odd numbers and the even numbers are in different corridors, but we found it. Outside our room is a little um, envelope with our key card. It's fine, you can go, it's all good. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna check into our room. We've booked an inside cabin, so the cheapest option. Um, so we've got our little cards. So we've just had a visit from our cabin steward, Jay, who's going to be looking after the room for the week while we're on board. Um, he just introduced himself, also advised us that we need to watch the uh, safety briefing that is on the television, which we're about to do. Um, but so far, first impressions of the room are good. 
So when you first come into the room, you've got a wardrobe, and in that wardrobe, you've got plenty of hangers, lots of hanging space. There's also a safe. It's not a really huge safe, so for instance, I've bought my laptop, and it's not going to fit into the safe but it's fine for kind of valuables, smaller valuables. And there's also sh some shelving in the cupboard as well. And the wardrobe has got a full length mirror, which is very good for us getting ready at night, glamming up a little bit. So I'm glad to see a full length mirror. There's also a very big vanity mirror, uh, a little desk, and we've got some uh, room service breakfast menus, if that's what you like. If you want it delivered, it is, I think it's about £2.50 each to have it delivered to the room. But I think it's only, they don't do cooked breakfast, it's all continental style. There's a little um, brochure about the ship and all the restaurants on board. And we've got a kettle in the room, we've got tea and coffee and biscuits. And the toilet and shower is actually seems pretty spacious. I mean, you wouldn't want more than one person in here, but the shower um, cubicle is a decent size. And the good thing is for us ladies out there, the lighting is very good in here. So for doing makeup, 10 out of 10. In the toilet, you've got hand wash, you've got um, shampoo and shower gel, all white stuff. Smells really nice. If you want conditioner or body lotion, you can just ask your steward and they will bring them to the cabin for you. There's also a hair dryer in the room, so no need to bring your own. So every day you will get, I think at night actually, for the next day, you'll get the Horizon um, little pamphlet. pamphlet, that's the one, that tells you what's on for the following day. The other thing that's in the cabin is a kind of um, plan of the deck, so it tells you what's on each deck. But what I actually did before we came was went onto the P&O website and took a screenshot. They've actually got the deck plan of Iona there, and I just think that's going to be a lot easier for when we're navigating around the ship. So something worth noting is that each passenger is allowed to bring on to the boat one litre of alcohol each. So I've brought a bottle of wine, obviously that doesn't make up a litre, so I've also brought some mini gins and I've brought some tonic waters as well. You are actually also allowed to bring, I believe, unlimited soft drinks, snacks on board with you. What I like about the room is that there's lots of different lighting options. You've got your spotlights on the ceiling and you've also got your little bedside lamps as well. Underneath the bedside lamps there are a, a USB charger on each side as well, so that's handy for charging phones and things. I'm definitely not going to be stuck for entertainment on this ship and within your cabin on the television there are lots of films to choose from to watch. Um, all the different genres, so I'm excited about that. We definitely won't be needing to use our laptops or anything like that. We can just lie back in bed and watch a movie before sleep. The great thing is that you can pop your suitcase under the bed once you've unpacked, providing it's not huge, but to be fair, our case, my case was pretty big and that fitted no problem at all, so it's great. It just gets it out of the way and it means that in a small space like this, the suitcase isn't taking up any room. The mattress on the bed feels super comfy, so I'm hoping we're going to get really nice sleep while we're here. Now, I want to share with you some tips about booking things before you come on board this ship. If you haven't watched our previous Iona vlog, check it out as we share lots of pre-departure tips. Because it is a very big ship, there's a lot going on. There's lots of entertainment, there's lots of dining and everything like that. So two weeks before your cruise, you can log in to your account on P&O and there's certain things that you can book before you come. The booking opens at midnight, exactly two weeks before your cruise. So on the Friday midnight, two weeks before your cruise, you can log in and start booking things. So there's a couple of things that you can't book two weeks before your cruise. And those are the Olive Grove restaurant and the 710 Club. Now the Olive Grove restaurant is included within your allowance, although there are certain things on the menu that you have to pay extra for, but not too many. And because of that, it gets very, very popular. Now because you can't book it two weeks beforehand, I recommend that as soon as you get on the ship, if this is somewhere you want to go for food, you need to book it. Now my top tip to you is that when you're queuing up in the terminal before you actually get on to the boat, the ship. You can go on to the My p o Holiday app. Literally all you have to do is Google My p o Holiday app. It will take you to a page and on that page you need to put the last six digits 
of your boarding pass number along with your other details, I think name, date or birth. And from there, it will take you into a booking where you can start booking other things. And the Olive Grove is one of those. So is the 710 Club, which is a live music club that happens every night, a few times per night. But those two things get super, super busy. So if you're a little bit late getting boarding onto the ship, the chances are that these things may be sold out by the time you get there. But if you're quick and you actually do it while you're queuing before you get onto the ship, then you've got a better chance of booking. So that's what I did. And we did manage to get a slot in the Olive Grove, albeit it's not until nine o'clock at night for one of our evenings, but at least we got in there. Lunch times seem to be quieter, so that's easier to book. We've come to the Keys for a little evening snack. This is all included in your food allowance. You've got fish and chips, you've got Asian food, and you've also got American light like, burgers and chips and stuff. So I've just had the gluten-free um, Asian dish, which was actually vegetarian as well. There was corn, sweet and sour corn, it was delicious. There's also a little section around the corner from the Keys where you've got a salad bar and there's also desserts and you can also get water, milk and tea and coffee there as well. We've just had our snack um, at the Keys and we thought we'd just have a little quick wander around some of the area nearby. So we're outside on deck eight. We've just been informed by the captain that we will not be leaving Southampton at 6 p.m. as planned. It will be about one o'clock in the morning. So we're not sure if we're actually gonna make Stavanger as our first port or if that will be canceled. We'll find out as time goes on. But it's very windy out here and the sea is extremely choppy. So I'm glad we're not leaving just now. First impressions of being on the boat, <laughs> the boat, <laughs> the ferry, the ship. That's it, it's a ship, isn't it? Uh, it's absolutely huge, uh, really impressive. Um, obviously they do this all the time, so it's like a proper, um, well-oiled machine. Uh, there's loads of people. It's quite intimidating, quite daunting to begin with, but I think, you know, it's just because it's a lot of energy and excitement going on, but um, I think that'll settle into a nice rhythm as we uh, hit the seas. Um, my one concern is just hoping that these patches that I've taken, I've got one by me here, they're called scopoderm patches for travel sickness because I'm not very good on the water, so I'm hoping they'll work. Um, you got to put patches on about six hours before you hit the water. Um, so if all goes to plan, we're leaving it at about one o'clock in the morning and then while I'm asleep, this will kick in and I'll be fine. I'll keep you posted on that because um, the last thing I want is to be seasick. But everyone does tell me the ship's that big that it's not going to make any difference it's, it, unless there's a big massive storm. So let's hope they're right. We've been to the gym, we've had a shower, we've got ready and we're now going to go for our first dinner on the Iona. Now, I just want to tell you a few things. There are four main dining rooms. There's the Coral, the Pearl, the Aqua and the... we'll put it on the screen. Anyway, those four are the main dining rooms and they are included in your food allowance. Now, the menu at each restaurant is the same every night. It changes each night, but it's the same in each restaurant. So you're not gonna get different food in each restaurant. It's more just about which one you prefer in terms of the ambience and things like that. If you're online on any Facebook groups and you see MDR, cause that confused me for a while, cause people use abbreviations when it comes to these cruise ships. MDR stands for main dining room. So tonight we are going to go to the Coral restaurant, which is one of the bigger of, there's two big ones, two small ones, and we're gonna go to Coral tonight and check that out. tired. It's hard work eating loads. So we've just been to the coral. It was really nice. I was actually pleasantly surprised. My salad that I had for starter was a little bit bland, I would say. There was no dressing on it, so that was a little bit disappointing. But the rest of the meal was really nice. I had a vegetarian main, which was delicious, and a pavlova for dessert. Ewan had a steak. His dad had pork loin and soup for starter and a really nice chocolate dessert as well, which was super tasty. That was lovely, actually. So yeah, all in all, 
happy with the meal, it was really nice. So I feel like we're getting our bearings now on the ship. We have covered most decks now, we've had a, a good walk around. We're going to show you more tomorrow. But I feel like I'm kind of starting to know roughly where things are, although it is a huge ship. So I definitely recommend, as I said before, like taking a screenshot on your phone of the deck plans because it just helps. There are signs at the lifts that tell you what's on each floor. But it's quite nice when you can actually see it as a deck plan because then you know what side and where things are in relation to each other. So I would definitely do that. So tomorrow was our first at sea day. And I guess we'll find out tomorrow morning if we are going to make our stop in Stavanger on Monday. I'm really hoping that we do. It would be a shame if we don't get to see that, but I guess it just depends if we're going to be able to make up the time that we miss um, because we've had to leave late today. So, yeah, it's been a really good first day. I'm hoping that we get a good night's sleep. We're going to lose an hour tonight because the clocks go forward because we're going to go into Norway time. So we will lose an hour, so we'll have to make sure that we set our phones and we're going by the right time, but I'm sure it'll be on the telly the right time. So yeah, we're going to say goodnight now, and we'll see you in the morning. Morning! So, it is, well, actually, my clock's wrong because the clocks have gone forward. So it's five past nine, although to me it feels about six o'clock in the morning. It's weird. Um, I think having an inside cab on the only downside is that obviously it's dark, which is nice because it means that you can sleep longer but it's a bit harder to wake up um, but all in all I had an okay sleep it took me a little while to get to sleep and every now and again it, did, it wasn't really movement I felt but you just kind of felt a little something it was kind of weird um, but it was pretty quiet on the whole and yeah the bed was really really comfy so we're gonna go for breakfast now we've decided to try the keys for breakfast this morning and so we'll see what that's like, it may be quite busy, but um, yeah, I'm feeling a little bit hungry, but a little bit sleepy still. Yeah, I think these patches seem to be working alright, uh, there's a bit of movement, but I don't feel sick, which is a bonus. It looks pretty calm out there, we've got a little um, view on the telly, if you go onto the telly and then go on to, um, it's called Bridge View and Cruise Radio Bow Cam. Mm -hmm. So we're down at the Keys and there's quite a lot of selection for breakfast. You've got your full English, um, you've got omelettes, scrambled egg and pancakes, waffles and round the corner you've also got yogurt, fruit, um, orange juice, you've got smoothie here. So yeah, a good selection. out on deck and it's so nice and chilled. I could literally just lie here and fall asleep. It's not cold, it's just like a nice temperature. But instead we're gonna just do a wee bit more exploring off the ship. We've decided to come to the cinema. Now, there's only about 50 seats in each cinema, so I read that it's best to come early to guarantee a seat. So that's what we've done. We're 20 minutes early, and we're gonna go and watch I Wanna Dance With Somebody, uh, which is quite fancied it. Hopefully, I'll stay awake. <laughs> so, I'm just getting ready because tonight is celebration night. So this is the night on the ship where you get dressed up, you put your best frocks on, so black tie for the men or like formal suit and jacket, and nice dresses for the ladies. Now you don't have to get dressed up, if you really don't want to that's absolutely fine, but for the main dining rooms and for the kind of speciality restaurants you do need to be dressed up. I think for the Horizon Buffet you're absolutely fine to not be dressed up. So on this night you will actually be given one of these which is a little token for a free drink. And we have decided to book the chef's table tonight. So 
this is something that gets booked up very quickly. It only happens on celebration night. And I read kind of mixed reviews about this because it takes place in the Horizon Buffet area, although apparently it's a kind of a section that's cordoned off. So some people said they didn't like it because it didn't feel very special. But I decided let's try it. Something a bit different. Because it's only on one night, then we can't try it again. So I booked that at home two weeks before the cruise and I got on really quickly to book it. So I would advise you do the same if that's something that you're interested in because if you wait till you come on the ship, the chances are it will be fully booked. There's two sittings. There's one at six o'clock and I think the other one's at maybe eight, half past eight. So we're going for the earlier one now. So I'm just getting ready. By the way, the cinema this afternoon was really good. We enjoyed the film, the Whitney Houston film. It was really good. And it was nice to just be in the cinema. It was, it was a cute little cinema. So that was something really nice to do uh, while at sea. First class. It was a good pick of places to go on this ship. I'll tell you, it was really nice. I would recommend it thoroughly. So yes, I have to say, I've really enjoyed the chef's uh, table experience. I know, as I said earlier, there's mixed reviews about it online, but actually the fact that it's near the buffet really didn't bother me at all. You don't feel like that. You're far enough away from it, well, where we were anyway. We had a nice table quite near the window so we could see the sea, and the food was really, really tasty. The menu, I will say, is quite small. It's quite limited. You've only got three or four choices per course. I'm not sure if the other dining rooms are the same on celebration night or if there's a bigger choice but and for gluten-free there was only one choice per course but all in all I really enjoyed it and I'm glad we did it what's really nice as well is that the, at the end of your meal all the chefs come out and they do a little parade around the dining room and they get a little round of applause so that was really nice to see So we've just been to see Digital and yeah, do you know what, it was a bit of fun. I wouldn't say the storyline was particularly strong but the music, the singing and the dancing were all really good and the graphics were fantastic. There was actually a bit near the end where their costumes all lit up and I've never seen anything like, oh I'm swaying a bit, um, I've never seen anything like that before so it was really a feast for the eyes. And do you know what? They all did amazing. So, yeah, I mean, I quite enjoyed it. It wasn't like the best thing I've ever seen, but it was good hours entertainment. The show was fine. It's a modern day type show. But personally speaking, it's not my cup of tea. I would like a storyline, but that's a modern thing. And some people like that and some people don't. The, what, the, 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 the dancers worked their socks off, but not my cup of tea. That was a good fun 50 minutes. Uh, like Romana says and Dad says the dancers were excellent, worked their socks off. No story really, but you know what? It was nice just to sit in the theatre and enjoy it. Um, it seems like the patch is working. I've not felt seasick at all, so that's a bonus. I mean, it's quite, it's not that choppy out there, so who knows, but fingers crossed it's going to work for me. Um, we're looking forward to stopping at Stavanger to explore that and enjoy more of the cruise. I've really enjoyed Celebration Night. It's been really nice to just get dressed up for the occasion and to see everyone else in their fine finery. <laughs> and it's nice to just come out onto the promenade deck, have a little wander around and look at this beautiful view behind me. It's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I'm going to go as far as to say that perhaps I've become a cruise convert. This was something that I was never interested in, but I have to say it after, well, so far, it's only been like two days, not even that. But I'm starting to feel like I might be a convert to cruising. There might be more cruises to come from this channel, so stay tuned. But there is anyway, because in the next video, we're going to be showing you what Stavanger has to offer as a port. And we're going to be reviewing more of the restaurants on board Iona. So we hope that you've enjoyed this first vlog. There's plenty more to come, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching, and if you've enjoyed this, Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel.